हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ माध्यम आई एस माई नेम इज रवि त्रिपाठी आई एम करंट अफेयर फैकल्टी इन माध्यम आई एस तो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द डिस्कस द एडिटोरियल इंपॉर्टेंट एडिटोरियल इन डिफरेंट न्यूज पेपर पर्टिकुलरली इन हिंदू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लॉट ऑफ विशेस टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर लोहरी एंड मकर संक्रांति तो नाउ स्टार्ट लेट स्टार्ट टूडे सेशन फर्स्ट यू शुड नो दैट Madhyam IS has start already started the uh, batches for UPSC and state PSC examination from 20th of January. Uh, political science PSIR batches uh, for, uh, for uh, mains examination has been started, and we are also starting the foundation batch from 18th and general studies three year program for from 18th January. From 15th we are starting the test series for both UPSC and UPPSC examination and PT special batch from 20th January. You can visit the center and take admission for your UPSC and UPPCS preparation. Okay, all the faculty uh, in the center have long experience in their domain, so uh, you will get uh, benefit of the experience of the uh, from the experience of the faculty. Okay, so let's start today's first important important related to the capital tailmate this article this editorial focused on the issue of a uh, stalemate issue uh, or uh, uh, diversion or you can say a dispute between the uh, governor lieutenant governor and the elected government of the delhi as this dispute this dispute is in news for long but now this dispute is related to the why uh, the central government you can say the lieutenant governor as you all know the status of delhi delhi is not the state delhi is the union territory okay delhi is the union territory with legislature 69th constitutional amendment act 69th constitutional amendment act 1992 added article 239 aa okay this article provides the special status to the delhi government according to this article delhi government is the union territory but have uh, got power to appoint or elect the legislative assembly to form the legislative assembly and council for delhi okay so delhi has a unique administrative structure a unique legislative structure as you all know that union territories are directly controlled by the central government uh, in hindi the uh, union territories are known as the kendra shasit means central government okay so uh, central government is governing the union territories by appointing the administrator president of india appoints the administrator for union governments most in all states also president of india appoints the governor for the state governor work on the pleasure of the president of india and indirectly on the pleasure of the uh, council of minister because president is bound by the advice of council of minister so president of india or you can say central government has power in most of the matter for union territories even for delhi in india two union territories delhi and pondicherry has their legislative structure unique administrative structure that union territories with legislature okay third union territories you jammu and kashmir propose uh, a union territory with legislature will become a union territory with legislature okay so uh, this constitutional amendment also declared the delhi as national capital territory national capital territory which include the part from different states also such as noida uh, hisar hari from haryana from rajasthan from uttar pradesh in development region of the delhi so the delhi ca can get um, be connected by uh, Uh, the expansion of delhi can, uh, may be possible because of most of the industries most of the power hubs are located in the delhi why delhi is not provided uh, even prior to some month or you can say uh, since the appointment of uh, election since the victory of the aam aadmi party in delhi uh, the chief minister of delhi is demanding the complete statehood for the delhi okay but statehood for the delhi is itself a complex matter because delhi is, is the power house of india central governments most of the important offices embassies are located in the delhi most all prime minister president uh, 
parliament are located in the delhi so delhi is the important not, do not have importance only for the parliamentary point of view but also uh, at other point of view for business point of view for corporations for corporates for widgets so delhi is the hub so central government may not let go government delhi government completely in hand of the any other state government who uh, because central government has its objective for the development of the whole india but state focus on their development of for their states only so it will create later on tussle between the central government and state government so that the unique structure for delhi has been adopted okay what happened here uh, this article focused on the municipal election in uh, delhi recently municipal election municipal corporation of delhi election held and in this election after uh, to, uh, to, after two decades bjp lost this election okay and aam aadmi party won the local municipal corporation election in delhi okay this after the victory of election what happened the governor lieutenant governor of delhi uh, delhi nc nct national capital territory elected some alderman some person in the mcd okay mcd means municipal corporation of delhi and this created tussle governments is saying the elected government is saying that lieutenant governor is taking over the uh, is, is doing act illegally uh, against the act passed by, uh, running the structure of the delhi government and also avoiding the interest of the elected government he is passing the interest of the elected government and working in favor of the central government okay this is the allegation raised by these are the allegation raised by the aam aadmi party why this allegation has been raised because mr saxena who is the lieutenant governor of delhi appointed tell 10 alderman and bjp councillor to preside over the poll okay this had created tussle aam aadmi party who won the election okay so as per the act municipal corporation act of the delhi what is the structure of municipal corporation uh, municipal corporation had the elected legislature elected corporate corporation okay elected members in the house okay in the corporation and these elected member are authorized to nominate to nominate the uh, experienced person in different domain as a alderman alderman term is being used for long time in uk okay so this term taken from the british sojourn it means the elder person the experienced person the person who has authority the authorized person you can say and this term is taken so alderman is nothing but a term used that these are the nominated member alderman are the nominated member in the municipal corporation of delhi so this is creating tussle because elected members has uh, the right to appoint alderman as per the uh, elected governments elected uh, representatives uh, argument in uh, delhi uh, council okay delhi uh, corporation okay but what mr saxena what lieutenant governor of delhi did he has appointed he has nominated 10 members prior to the election event okay before the election as the alderman man and also presiding officer has been appointed from the bjp party even the aam aadmi party has majority in the corporation but the presiding officer appointed from the bharti janata party okay so this is the tussle aam aadmi party demanding that presiding officer should be elected should be from the majority party but governor appointed governor has taken his discretion by by passing the uh, mandate of people okay and also the nomination of 10 elder man even mcd act said that 10 members can be nominated by the different field experience has in the municipal corp related to the field uh, experience related uh, to the importance in the municipal corporation so up is aam aadmi party is while, uh, saying that these members do not have experience in municipal corporation an experienced person has been appointed has been nominated by the uh, uh, governor in the house so that this is to bypass the 
uh, this is bypassing the elected mandate of people, mandate of citizen of Delhi. Okay. So, this is the allegation and also these 10 aldermen has been provided the voting right. Okay. As MCD Act said that the nominated member aldermen be nominated by the elected representative but without voting right. So, by providing voting right this, to these members, the, what uh, Amadhi party is saying that governor, left hand governor of central government is taking, trying to take control over the appointment of the mayor. Okay. So, this is the allegation and this tussle is not new. If there is pro-government legislative, legislative governor are appointed by the president, you can say the by the central government. It works on the pleasure of the president. So, as Delhi uh, Legislative Assembly, Delhi Assembly, State Assembly do not have complete freedom to frame law. Okay. As in most of the uh, uh, states, there is a different domain of the central government, state government and concurrent uh, list as provided in the seventh schedule of the constitution. Central government form law for the from the central list, state government from the state list and uh, central and state both from the concurrent list. Here, by this constitutional amendment, Delhi government provided power to frame law on all matter of the state list and concurrent list also, except the public order, police and land. Okay. So, on the matter of land, police and public order, only lieutenant governor has power to frame law. So, here you can say the police are the state subjects, but not in Delhi. Okay. Apart from this, Governor also has power, Lieutenant Governor also has power that he can take any decision according to his discretion. So, he can appoint any administrator, he has power to appoint administrator, bureaucrats, okay. He has power to transfer bureaucrat, he has power to take action against the bureaucrats. So, if they are given power to uh, uh, the appointment transfer of the bureaucrats, so it is also bypassing the uh, council of ministers or mandate of the people okay <coughs> as the council of ministers advice are binding on the president but no mention has been made in the constitution that council of advice are binding on the governor also it is it is uh, defined by the different high courts and supreme court that governor the council of advice are binding on the governor but in most of the cases the unique structure of Delhi, there is also to have an attain judgment of Supreme Court that governor should work according to the advice of council of minister, but uh, there is the lack of, you can say coordination between the elected government and legislature is creating tussle in the uh, Delhi government, okay. So, this time you can say he has appointed senior most counsellor at the presiding officer also and his uh, the counsellor is from the BJP, even the Aam Aadmi Party won the majority seats, okay. So, Aam Aadmi Party also alleged that the elder man appointment by Mr. Saxena were given the voting right as it is not mentioned in the, it is violation of the MCD Act because it is not mentioned in the MCD Act that elder man uh, will not be provided, uh, Elderman will provide the voting right or not. And also this question is unclarified because yes, MCD mentioned that Alderman to be appointed without voting right, but Lieutenant Governor had discretionary power to change any kind of act, okay. So, this is creating the tussle and face off in government. The party has pointed out that Left hand governor is ignoring the council of minister and issuing order to the bureaucracy directly on all matters. So, at the bureaucracy, if any state government or any government want to work properly, so it may have control over the bureaucracy. Okay. If bureaucracy is not under the control of the government, then most of the plan, policy, programs, government planning will not get success. On, because government will not be in power to uh, enforce the bureaucrat, the policy in defined man. Okay. So, technically, Lieutenant Governor has executive control over only on three matters, as I told you, police, public order and land. But all other subjects, 
transfer subject lie with the elected government. This is you can say technically, but in most of the matter, lieutenant governor has their say. Lieutenant governor governor interface according to the will of the central government. Okay, but by virtue of controlling the bureaucracy and exercising the power to transfer, suspend, take action against any employee of the Delhi government, lieutenant governor authority extended beyond those. So, if lieutenant governor has power over the bureaucracy, it means lieutenant governor has the power over all the things. He can control all the things in the administration administration of the Delhi. Okay, so Aam Aadmi Party is alleging that this kind of interference of lieutenant governor uh, and bypassing the elected government in most of the matter is not is is against the structure created for the Delhi. Okay. So the Supreme Court also called for the statesmanship and wisdom by the actors. Actors means lieutenant governor and elected government in Delhi. Okay. To not uh, resolve uh, stalemates. So they should resolve stalemate as Supreme Court is trying to say by not interfering the each other's jurisdiction. They should work in coordination so the uh, government of Delhi can be run properly. Okay. The heightened political competition between the Aam Aadmi Party and BJP has worsened the situation, but the root of it all is legal ambiguity that need to be dispelled. Okay. As this situation, this standoff created between the Delhi and uh, be between the LG and elected Delhi government is not new. Okay. Uh, but if there is ambiguity in law, law should be clear. If law should be, if laws are clear, then ambiguity can be avoided. So, author wants to say that this political competition between the elected government of Delhi and the lieutenant governor of the Delhi uh, should be or can be avoided by making the law, clear laws on the clear subject. Okay. Recently, central government amended the, uh, introduced the amendment in the Delhi NCT Act, but the amendment also not clear over the most of the things. So, there is need that central government makes a law for uh, clear authority or clear division of power between the elected uh, members of the government and the power of lieutenant governor. But yes, if there is elected member in any state or union territory with uh, union territory with legislature, then the uh, this is the people mandate. Elected government is mandated by the people. They are representative. Represent they are representative of people. And every government, central government, should respect the member of the people, and they should they should be provided the uh, authority to rule the state accordingly with the power provided them under the act. Okay, as public order, police and land already taken by the acts, the transfer and uh, uh, interference in the administrative matter is also uh, cause of concern. Apart from this, in most of the such are the MCD dispute, a municipal corporation dispute, lieutenant uh, governor has appointed most of the member by avoiding elected members and also providing voting right to the order mans. Okay, so this is creating the... Uh, a tussle like situation in the government and um, Delhi could be a peaceful state. De there should not be any kind of conflict between the elected government and nominated government in Delhi. So that the peaceful Delhi is the need for India because this is the powerhouse of India and also uh, central government should respect the uh, structure or statutory or laws in the Delhi particular, okay, particular in the Delhi. So, this article focused on the status of Delhi. Okay. So, next article related to the entering a year of uncertainty. Okay. The author in this article predicts that 2023 year may not be as disturbed as 2022. Okay. So, he is mentioning in this article the uh, Ukraine crisis, COVID crisis, other development uh, started in 2022 and is still going on. Okay. So, but he is also predicting that 
how 2023 will be at the geopolitical at, the, at geopolitical level and what will be the india's geopolitical status in 2023 okay so let's start he started the view that the russia ukraine conflict as we have a lot of discussion on this topic russia ukraine conflict but this article is not discussing the reason of russia ukraine conflict outcome of Russia Ukraine conflict but only reference that Russia Ukraine conflict erupted in 2022 has become the major disruptor of the existing order. In 2022 whole world was disturbed because of this war because this war not only impacts the Russia not only the Ukraine but it has the global impact. It again created the 1916 like situation world war one like situation when the world was divided into two poles so it created the two poles one is uh, one pole has the us european nations ukraine one side and uh, ussr sorry russia china on other side okay so and also he the author said that there is already a proxy war between the us europe nato on one hand and russia on other hand what is the proxy war means there is no direct war between the us and russia but they are fighting the proxy war means indirectly russia is in war with ukraine us is providing the US and European countries are providing the uh, arms, ammunition, food, fund and other required material to Ukraine. Okay. So, they are involved in the war but not directly involved in the war. Direct involvement of Russia and US may cause the nuclear war at global level. Okay. Because Russia has nuclear warhead, US has nuclear warhead, nu uh, both are nuclear capable countries. So, if war, if direct war between the US and uh, Russia, so US is also avoiding the direct conflict with Russia to maintain the global order. Okay. Uh, suppose this time Russia is the in the closest tie of in the closest relation with China. Okay. And Ukraine, Russia was think Russia was thinking that it will take over the Ukraine within a month, but Still the war is going on just because of the proxy war between these US, European and NATO members are supporting the Ukraine, Russia on the other side and this is the region of major fallout of economic realm. Okay. Because when war is going on, most of the things, most of the export from these countries is now been curtailed because of the war. Russia is the economic powerhouse. Uh, it is uh, sorry energy powerhouse it was supporting the most of the uh, energy to the european countries this created the inflation like situation okay crude oil uh, become uh, crude oil cost increased okay food item cost increased so global impact can be seen of this war so what proxy war means us and europe are not only european countries are not only supporting ukraine but also import, imposing the sanctions over the Russia. Okay. Suppose ban the Russian banks from the SWIFT. Okay. SWIFT is the messaging platform for international trade. Okay. SWIFT is the messaging platform only. Nothing else. Russia has been banned from this system. Most of the economic sanctions has been imposed on Russia. The property of Russians, the investment of Russian in different countries has been freezed. Most of the account has been freezed, but Russia is also opposing by provoked energy crisis. As I told you earlier, that Russia is providing most of the energy need to European nations. And when European nation allied uh, with US and NATO impose sanction over the Russia on the Russia, then Russia taken the step and Russia increase the energy price. Russia curtailed the energy supply to the European nation and it created huge energy crisis in the uh, European nation. Okay. So, this is the NATO and one hand and the 
you uh, russia on other hand this is the tougher life situation in 2022 and its impact its impact can be seen globally okay so this article also said that because of this war between the U ukraine and russia and proxy war between the west and eastern uh, russia uh, russia particularly and created the china russia relationship more concrete okay so both have the statement that the relationship between enjoying are the best period in their history so both countries as the both have the same ideologies socialist or communist ideologies china is also want to control taiwan russia is in war with ukraine there is also super emerging power super power china is also emerging super power the us want to control the china european countries want to control the china so china and russia both are in good relationship because of this proxy war between the west and russia okay so after this he said that the covid like situation also created the different you know different phenomena in the global globe glo uh, in the world okay as 2023 has dawned and the arc of the instability increased okay because of war is going on inflation is high Uh, crude oil prices are high, so it he is predicting that there is st still instability in 2023. What is also become evident is massive increase in the defense spending by almost every country. Okay, and because uh, and creating also economic instability, economic stress. So most of the country in the situation of this uh, G in in this geopolitical situation, when the major countries are trying to attack. the smaller countries or there is tussle suppose india is in uh, border dispute with china and pakistan china is also encroaching uh, uh, in indian territory in pok region okay so likewise most of the countries are spending more and more on their defense infrastructure defense estimate is spending on the defense across the globe understood to have crossed 2 trillion in 2022 and is expected to increase in 2023 so this article says that in 2022 global expenditure on military or on defense increase reached by 2 trillion dollar okay 2 trillion dollar in 2022 and expectation is that in 2023 it will increase more and more okay most of the european countries such as germany and france have announced substantial increase in defense spending japan has already declared that it will raise the defense budget to 2% of gdp and also india is one of the world's leader in the defense spending also okay you can say india's defense budget is third largest budget in the world okay so percentage of budget in the world okay so germany france most of the european country even us even russia even arabian countries even african african country and most of the asian countries are spending more and more on their defense and india is not out of it india is also spending more and more on its defense because this is the theory that if you have more resources to fight you can avoid the major fight okay so by this expenditure by the uh, defense expenditure more and more defense expenditure we are also eliminating the or decreasing the chances of that that investment can be made in different welfare sector different development sector in the country so that these money uh, are snatched from the development sector and welfare sector and uh, is going to the defense and military sector so there is a militarization of the uh, world can be seen in 2023 more and more defense equipment defense import defense development will be seen will be seen in 2023 okay so increased defense budget are the threatening in altering the nature of the defense relationship also and strategical autonomy so most of the countries are spending on defense it can also create a problem a future problem that they can create a threat like situation okay india's current shift from policy of non alignment to multi alignment 
this is important point so also remember for mains that if question asked that india is shifting from its non alignment to uh, multi alignment what is non alignment when the world was divided in two poles at the time of cold war between the ussr and russia so most of the countries were um, divided in two front most of the countries were uh, on uh, ussr ussr side some countries were in uh, world were divided in two half one in ussr second in USS, uh, us okay so ussr us that time india chose that india will not go with uh, uh, the ussr neither go with ussr nor with us it adopted the non alignment means it is non align non aligning to any country who are in uh, war situation war like situation or cold war situation okay threatening each other so india adopted the non alignment policy that time but by increasing the involvement of india at in the international group groups like quad okay quad like groups and involvement of the more and more uh, defense deal more and more international organizations and uh, groupings against the uh, expansionist policy of the china can be say that india is moving from non or non alignment to multi alignment and this is the major policy shift for india okay so india's defense architecture also increased and it because of the tension between the india and china and there is a border dispute uh, between the india and china india and pakistan so india need to spend india's compulsion that it should spend more and more on the defense to protect its sovereignty okay now you should this article also talk, talk about the india's neighborhood and their state their uh, strategy in 2022 china as controlling covid-19 and managing the fallout of its economic downturn would be main challenge okay means china for china china is there is a, a huge spread of the covid-19 cases in china so china is controlling there is lockdown in most of the areas in china so there uh, the chinese economy is is not good is not in good condition and also co by covid 19 restriction their economic structure is collapsing so you can say china will be not in condition to attack or to take any aggressive measure in 2023 2023 so consequently it is unlikely that china would unilaterally provoke a conflict or take a provocative procedure neighboring this year okay means according to the article as china is suffering with covid-19 and economic downturn so it is unlikely that china may provoke any kind of aggression in 2023 so 2023 may be a peaceful for india and china at the border taiwan and any breaching of the first island chain uh, chain will remain Ch china is priority means if china will take aggression so it will not take aggression with the uh, indian government but also it is its priority is to the control the taiwan okay now for other india the altered shape of international order leave little room the china russia entered uh, in center created the dent in india's long division as india uh, russia is the good friend of the in, uh, india but with increasing the china and russia tie and india tie with us are deteriorating the india and russian relationship okay it impact can be seen and uh, may be the far reaching in 2023 uh, even india is also maintaining a good relationship with russia with us india is also has uh, its defense deal with russia some kind of the um, nostro vostro account with russia it is also importing in some indian currency and using the russian currency uh, is also dealing the uh, currency swap uh, with russia and Uh, not stopped any kind of import from russia even it's increased the crude oil import from russia russia is making the largest basket of crude oil import in india so india is maintaining maintaining its relationship with russia and uh, ussr also uh, us also but this article said that as china and russia is closing their relationship uh, uh, giving a are uh, 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 in the concrete shape uh, receiving the concrete shape so it may deteriorate the india russia relationship okay as absence of the settled border with both china and pakistan will continue plague india but 
Pakistan has facing its internal problem and economic difficulties unlikely to pose major threat in 2021. So according to him, according to the author, nor China, neither China nor Pakistan is uh, coming in aggression, direct aggression with India in 2023. But yes, as Pakistan's provocation to use of terror module likely increase in India and the attack in Jammu Kashmir uh, likely leading to the quadric attack in Jammu Kashmir and other region in India. So India must be uh, prepared, must uh, take uh, the um, steps to prepare itself, prepare uh, India for any future terror attack. Okay. So this is his December during 2023, India will also find itself hemmed by other problems that have emerged in South Asia, such as India's in not in good relation with the Nepal. At this time, Nepal government in coalition with the pro-Chinese government, in coalition with the uh, member or leader who is pro-Chinese in nature. So also there was uh, there were a dispute uh, before a year between India and Nepal related to the uh, election and division of constituencies, the Madhesi constituencies, uh, Madhesi uh, related to the uh, rights of Madhesi people living in uh, Nepal. They have their origin in India. So. Also, Nepal is a controversial map that India in position of Nepali territory. So, this is creating the some uh, disruptive or some bad relation between the India and Nepal. Okay. Now, not only Nepal, but Afghanistan. As Afghanistan, India, Afghanistan was good friend of India. But after taking off, uh, the Afghanistan is under the regime of the Taliban. And now, China is moving closer to the Taliban. Okay, so India's relation with Afghanistan is also not good and because India is a democratic country and it do not support any kind of the encroachment of power or coup, Taliban has taken over the Afghanistan and Taliban has the uh, very harsh, uh, Taliban want to make Islamic Emirate. So India is not in good relation with the Taliban and also relationship with the Sri Lanka and Bangladesh appear delicately poised because in Sri Lanka, there is an economic crisis and in Bangladesh also, there is some dispute related to the uh, border sharing and river water sharing and other kind of dispute. So, China is increasing its investment not in Bangladesh, but also in Sri Lanka. And because of this, investment in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka increase of, uh, increased by the China, India's interest in these countries can also be lowered in 2023. Okay. So, Apart from this, Myanmar, there is coup in Myanmar. Okay, so by uh, army control in Myanmar, the relationship of China uh, uh, with Myanmar are also increasing, and India's uh, relations with Myanmar are decreasing because India was favoring the democratic government in Myanmar, but China is in good relation with the army government of Myanmar. So, this 2023 may be uh, not good for geopolitical situation but for india there must be a lot of things to be done in 2023 such as india must have to take steps to make good relation with nepal good relation with sri lanka relation with the bangladesh and also take appropriate measures take appropriate measures to control any kind of infiltration or security threat as author of this article say, says that 2023, there is minimal chances of the direct con uh, direct conflict between the two nations, India or China or India or Pakistan. But yes, there is a terror threat from the uh, uh, terror threat from the um, Pakistan. So there could be also a proxy uh, war in. There are also proxy war in uh, between the Russia and other Western countries. So India should be cautious. Is uh, related to its relation with the Russia and also its neighbor. But yes, security should be priority for India. Defense budget should not be decreased because as geopolitics uh, are working. So most of the countries are accumulating the defense infrastructure. And India, in as its uh, India has border dispute with neighboring countries, so India should also secure its defense weapon and they should have a proper defense policy.
okay that's it for today's article today's internal analysis so thank you for watching today's article thank you